Hello YouTube, welcome to another Season 6 Patch 6.8 Guide by eGaming Television, and in this guide we are covering Caitlyn, the Sheriff of Piltover. Sorry boys, I keep the fuzzy cuffs at home. To view a nice list of our guides, you can head over to our website, which is www.egamingtv.com. We also do monthly skin giveaways on our Twitter, which is at egaming underscore TV, and April is coming to an end, so that giveaway is going to be coming up very, very shortly, so make sure you head over and follow. Now this footage is high diamond gameplay, and I chose this video in particular to show how dominant our lane phase is. As you saw, we just got our asses kicked trying to kill the jungle but we can still win lane phase as Caitlyn. So let's start by looking at Caitlyn's strengths and weaknesses by looking at her pros and cons page. Before Jin was released, Caitlyn was considered the sniper of League of Legends. When you think of a traditional sniper, you think of high range, high damage, but no mobility at all. Caitlyn has all of these, but she even has an escape built into her kit, which is why she's such a strong AD carry pick. One nice little bonus to Caitlyn as well is that she's actually got really nice lane control with the traps that she gets in her kit. If we're comparing her to a sniper then we can kind of relate that to a claymore, although obviously the traps don't do a lot of damage, but they may as well, considering Caitlyn can delete somebody in 3 shots anyways. She can even combo these traps with a support such as Morgana. When she does land her snare, simply drop a trap underneath and chain that CC for easy kills. Due to all of these pros, I would argue that Caitlyn is probably the safest AD carry laner in the game, and keep in mind that I did say in lane, not always, in lane. Caitlyn of course has some cons as well, the first one being her ultimate can be blocked. This is a fantastic ultimate that can do a lot of damage, but if people are around that are tanky, they can simply walk in front and take damage for the opponent that you did have the ultimate channeling on. Late game you are an auto attack monster, so this doesn't really matter too much in the late game, but it can stop you from getting some kills in the early and mid game. As Caitlyn is a long range high damage champion, she of course is weak in the close range and is squishy. You of course want to try to keep space between you and the enemy by doing stuff such as orb walking, but this is not always possible. It's not always possible to dodge every single CC in the game, and some are on click, not even skill shots, so we do get a Mercurial Shimitar in our build to help negate CCs. You are somewhat reliant on your team tanking for you in the front line, but hey, every AD carry has that problem. For our masteries, we go 18 Ferocity and 12 Cunning, grabbing Fervor of Battle as our Keystone Mastery. Warlord's Bloodlust was nerfed in 6.7, and therefore Fervor of Battle is by far the best choice for Caitlyn. In the Masteries, we focus on getting as much damage as possible, and some nice little survivability as well. For the second tier in Ferocity, I did decide to get Expose Weakness. This is very interchangeable, but since Caitlyn is such a long range champion, it is easy to damage multiple champions, so they do take 3% more damage from your allies. Other than that, this is a very standard AD carry champion mastery page, so I'm sure you guys have seen it many times in other guides you've seen. The rune page on Caitlyn is also very standard. We get 9 greater marks of attack damage, 9 greater seals of armor, 9 greater glyphs of magic resist, and 3 greater quintessences of attack speed. In total, this gives us 13.5% attack speed, 8.55 attack damage, 12 magic resist, and 9 armor. In combination, this gives us some nice attack speed and attack damage for harassing and last hitting minions, and we do get the armor and magic resist, so we take less damage from harassment. Since Caitlyn does have some mana issues, you can get rid of a few of the magic resists if you do want to pick up some extra mana regeneration, but I usually do not. It is one alternative I do see some Caitlyn players use, so I felt like I should mention it. Now we move into another standard page for AD carries, which is our summoner page, and of course it is flash and heal. Flash has a lot of defensive and offensive uses. This can allow you to escape from champions or can be used to chase opponents if needed. You can also use your flash to combo with your 90 caliber net, which is your E, to create a large gap between you and an enemy champion. Flash is a must have summoner and I will never replace it. Heal is by far the best summoner for bot lane. It helps both you and your lane partner, which gives it a lot of utility. You can use it to save yourself, an ally, or to bait people. Cleanse and Barrier are okay options if you want to be really selfish, but I always take heal. The fact that you can use this ability to save an ally is what makes it a must-have for me. Now we're going to learn what each of Caitlyn's abilities do, starting with her passive, which is called Headshot. So Caitlyn's next basic attack against enemies rooted by your Yordle Snap Trap or slowed by your 90 caliber net gains an additional 650 range and deals a bunch of extra damage, and you can see that on your screen there. 
This passive also just grants an extra 10% bonus attack speed, which is just a nice little thing to have on an AD carry. Why would you not want extra attack speed? Each of her normal basic attacks also generate a stack of headshot, which is also doubled when attacking from brush. Once you do reach 6 stacks, your next basic auto attack will be a headshot. You do not get the extra range from when something has been rooted by your Yordle Snap Trap or slowed by your Caliber Net, but you do get all of that damage. This is great in teamfights as you are attacking a lot, you will get a lot of these procs and do a bunch of extra damage. It can be also great in the lane phase when you are farming minions, you of course will also be getting these stacks and you can use a headshot on the enemy champion doing a lot of extra damage. If you are getting a lot of these passive headshots on the enemy champion, it can usually be hard for them to sustain in the lane and they usually have to go back fairly often. You can use this time to push minions under their tower and back yourself, gaining a massive advantage. Caitlyn's Q is called Piltover Peacemaker and it is pretty much her main ability, so we max it first. After one second, Caitlyn fires a projectile in the target direction that deals physical damage to the first enemy it passes through, after which it expands in width but deals only 67% damage to all enemies it passes through thereafter. The physical damage is between 25 and 205 base, plus between 130 and 170% AD, which is a really nice AD ratio to have on an ability. Enemies revealed by your Yordle Snap Trap always take full damage from Piltover Peacemaker. That means if it did go through a minion first, the person that was in the trap still will take 100% of the damage as opposed to 67%. The range it has is 1250, making it great to poke at people and harass them in the lane. The cost is between 50 and 90 mana, and the cooldown goes from 10 to 6 seconds. So this is fairly spammable, although you can have mana issues, and it does have a really nice AD ratio. Your other abilities aren't really damage based, so this of course is what we max first, being we are a damage based champion. Not only is it great for harassing people, but you can also clear minion waves up with this ability, making it even better. It is also really great to combo with your E, which we will talk about later. Now we land at her W, which is called Yordle Snap Trap. Caitlyn periodically stores a charge of Yordle Snap Trap up to a maximum amount stored at once, and the maximum is between 3 and 5, and it's based on the level of the skill, of course. So when activated, Caitlyn sets a trap at the target location that arms after 1.1 second and lasts up to 90 seconds. After the maximum amount of traps is laid down, deploying another immediately destroys the oldest one. Now since it does arm after 1.1 seconds, this allows you to combo it with stuff like Morgana's Snare, like it did say at the top of the guide. Because of that, Caitlyn works really well with stuff like Morgana or Taric, something she can easily set a trap underneath to go for easy kills. So enemy champions who step on a trap set it off, which roots them for 2 seconds, during which they take increased damage from headshot, grants true sight of them for 9 seconds, and renders them immune to Yordle Snap Traps for 4 seconds while they remain in the area. The headshot damage increase is between 30 and 190 base, plus 70% AD. You really really don't want to step in these traps as it can be devastating damage from Caitlyn and it is great for a zoning utility due to that. The range you can place the trap at is 800 and the little radius of the trap is 67.5. The cost is only 20 mana and the recharge time goes from 45 to 10 seconds at max rank. As I did mention, this is great for zoning people and you can have complete control of the bushes by having traps in them. This can be great for champions that do lane gank like say a Shaco. He will not always go into the bush of course, but if he did want to go into the bush and set up some little, little fucking jack in the box dudes, then he obviously would not be able to. Now although this isn't really damage based, neither is our E, and since this is better than our E because the recharge time does go down so drastically and we do get more maximum traps, we max this second behind our Q. So that brings us to our last basic ability, which is our E, and is called 90 caliber net. When activated, Caitlyn fires a net and dashes in the opposite direction, dealing magic damage to the first enemy hit and slowing them by 50% for one second. The magic damage it deals is between 70 and 230 plus 80% AP. The range of the ability is 950 and it shoots you 400 back. The cost is 75 mana and the cooldown goes from 16 to 10 seconds at max rank. Now I did say we max our W second, but some people do prefer to max their E second. This can give you slightly more burst in engagement since it does have relatively good base. The downside of course is it is based off of AP and we don't get AP. The cooldown going down is relatively nice as well, but the recharge time on the W is far better. 
You can combo this with a Q quickly behind it to shoot a Q where you did start your E and still move back. It is one of my favorite combos to do on Caitlyn to get huge chunks of damage and be safe. When you are far ahead, if you do land your E and Q, you can actually do enough damage to finish off squishy targets with your R. It is a hilarious thing to see happen to people. Other than that, this is a great thing to have. Caitlyn is already relatively safe since she does have a really nice basic auto attack range and traps to zone people. This just means if people do get on top of her, sometimes she'll be able to E out. Although she is really squishy, sometimes that doesn't really happen. She just kind of, you know, dies. Alright, on that note, that brings us right to our ultimate page, which is called Ace in the Hole. After a brief delay, Caitlyn locks onto a target enemy champion and channels for one second. At the start of the cast, Caitlyn gains true sight of the target. If Caitlyn completes the channel, she fires a homing projectile towards the target that deals physical damage to the first enemy champion it hits. Other enemy champions can intercept the shot. Now this was one of the cons I did talk about. A tanky champion can go between the line of you and the enemy champion, blocking the shot and taking that damage. The physical damage of the ability, however, is between 250 and 700 base with a 200% bonus AD ratio. That is a really nice ratio and base damage, so at least those champions that are blocking it are still taking a nice chunk of damage. The range of the ability is between 2000 and 3000, which is why Caitlyn was called the first League of Legends sniper, which has been replaced by Jin. The speed of the projectile is 3200, the cost is 100 mana, and the cooldown goes from 90 to 60 seconds at max rank. So if this ability was not blockable, this would be really overpowered, but the fact that it can be blocked makes it an okay ultimate. Late game though, when you are massive, I actually have trouble finding opportunities to use Ace in the Hole, as I can usually delete targets in a few auto attacks anyways. This is just really great in those situations where something is running away from you and you can't actually auto attack it, so you just drop on an ace in the hole and finish off the target that way. So with all the abilities covered, let's look at our ability order and keep in mind that W and E are very interchangeable and it is just dependent on your playstyle. I prefer W, but some people prefer the base damage on the E. So first is our ultimate, which is called Ace in the Hole, and we take it at 6, 11, and 16. We follow that up with our Q, which is called Piltover Peacemaker. You can take this at 1, 4, 5, 7, and 9. Now, I usually don't grab my level 1 ability until I know what I'll be needing. You may be in situations where you know the enemy is going to be invading, so you may want to take your W in those situations to guard your jungle. You may also get yourself into a rough situation early on and may want your E at level 1 if you do get caught so you can get away. In a normal standard game, however, you always want to take your Q at level 1. So on that note, let's move on and go to our W, which is called Yordle Snap Trap. We take that at 3, 8, 10, 12, and 13. Last but not least is our E, which is called 90 Caliber Net. You take it at 2, 14, 15, 17, and 18. You pretty much just need the single point in this ability for the escape utility. Alright, so now we arrive at Caitlyn's item build, which is a very typical AD carry build. This of course starts with a Doran's Blade, Health Potion, and Warding Totem. You always want to try to farm in lane until you can at least get your BF Sword, but if possible, try to afford your BF Sword and some normal boots as well. For our core, we get an Infinity Edge first, as it really increases Caitlyn's damage. Gives high damage, nice crit, and some increased crit damage, which works with her passive as well, making it a fantastic pickup on Caitlyn. Since Caitlyn doesn't really have a ton of AoE in her kit, just her Q really, we take a Runans. This is a great item on Caitlyn, and it does give the much needed attack speed and movement speed, so it is a really good core item on Caitlyn. It is interchangeable, but this is the one that I do prefer. We then always get Berserker Greaves 3rd, as of course it gives us some attack speed and some much needed movement speed to keep that gap between us and our target. When we are level 9, we want to make sure we do get rid of our Warding Totem for a Farsight Alteration. For our full build, we of course have that Infinity Edge, Runans, and Berserker Greaves, and then move into a Bloodthirster. This item just gives us some much needed attack damage and some really nice lifesteal. Having this lifesteal can be the difference between living and dying in a teamfight. The passive shield that this item does provide as well can also help with that. For our fifth item, we get Lord Dominic's Regards, and this is just to get through any of that armor that the enemy champions have built up at this point in the game. 
Lastly, to get more attack damage and to be able to break CCs, which is the main point of getting this item, we get a Mercurial Shimitar. This item was nerfed a little bit in this patch, but it is still by far the best 6 item for Caitlyn. Breaking the CC is the main point of getting this item. Now there are three different alternatives to the Rune Ans. You could get a Rapid Fire Cannon, a Phantom Dancer, or a Static Shiv. Every single one of these items provides the much needed attack speed and crit, and all three work well in the full build. This is just another personal preference. Static Shiv is good for minion waves, and the other two are just great for single target damage. Another alternative would be replacing the Lord Dominic's regards with a Mortal Reminder. This still gives you that much needed armor penetration, but it also gives Grievous Wounds. If you are against champions such as Swain and Mondo and you don't have Grievous Wounds already, this can be a fantastic item to pick up. One last alternative if you didn't really need the Mercurial Shimitar CC Breaker, you could get a Guardian Angel. This is probably the best alternative defensive pickup as, hey, you get to come back to life and deal a shit more damage. And you also have the lifesteal to get back up to full health. So Caitlyn is a really safe laner and she works with pretty much any support in the game. Since she does have a strong late game like all other AD carries to be honest, she can play with something like a Jaina or Soraka to secure any farm and get to that late game. She can also play with more aggressive supports like Taric, Thresh, and Morgana to chain CCs and get kills that way and start snowballing. If she's not able to get off her 90 caliber net really quickly, she can have some trouble dealing with stuff like Leona in the bottom lane. If Leona gets on top of her, it can be pretty annoying and if you do caliber net away, if she still has her ultimate, she can still CC you from a distance anyways. Leona Corky is a bitch for Caitlyn and she's really reliant on having good support from her support. When you do start playing Caitlyn, try using your EQ combo to get off a lot of damage on champions. It is relatively easy to do, you just have to make sure your E is in the direction of the enemy champion and will hit them, and use the Q instantly after to shoot the Q through them as well. As I've said before in this guide, this can give you enough damage to quickly use your R after and get a really easy free kill. Although Caitlyn's late game is pretty strong, she still can't 1v1 stuff like a Vayne. If you do have to fight a good Vayne player, at least make sure you are carrying around a Pink Ward. If you do get in a 1v1 situation, drop the Pink Ward so you can see her while she is tumbling in her ultimate and you can actually fight her. If she's far enough ahead, you're not really going to win those 1v1s, so in those situations, just don't be by yourself. But I would suggest at least having a Pink Ward so you can drop it. Don't always rely on your team having one. So that pretty much covers it for our Caitlyn 6.8 Season 6 Guide. If you guys did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. We will have lots and lots of League of Legends content coming out in the near future, so please look out for that. For a list of these guides, you can go to www.egamingtv.com as we upload all of those guides onto our website. Of course, they're on YouTube as well, but there is a nice list on our website. You can also follow us on Twitter if you wish to talk to us at egaming underscore TV. We have all of our monthly skin giveaways on our Twitter and April is coming to an end and we do our skin giveaways at the end of every month. So if you do follow us on Twitter, you will be eligible for those giveaways. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys around YouTube, the website and our Twitter.